thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for inviting me to participate in the session and thanks to the public for being here the last day. So I will talk about the Samnite landscape and the Samnite hill forts. So um, we have been working in this area in Molise, central Italy, uh, in these projects specifically since the, the beginning of 2013. Right. So our main goals is, uh, also of this presentation is first to reflect on the Samnite hillfort phenomena, so its role in the Central uh, Apenninic with uh, one less n. Um, so its roles in the in the society of the Central South uh, Apenninic mountains, to examine all the theoretical approaches to the creation of this landscape. So because it's also important to understand how the Samnite landscape was in the moment of the confrontation, big confrontation with the emerging Roman Empire. I want to assess the advantages of using LIDAR in this uh, area, and but LIDAR not only LIDAR in its own, but also comparing it to other uh, methodologies, mostly uh, field survey in, mount in mountains. So we will see that this very challenging approach. And well, we need to find instruments, tools to create uh, better instruments rather than this uh, map here. So because we think, I think that cartography is the best way to explain landscapes to to people in a standard world way for the general to the general public. Well, so we have this. Uh, uh, this is our research area. So we have the four, let's say, uh, big blocks. Two of them uh, in relation to Roman colonies from the third century uh, BC, first Isernia, in the modern province of uh, well Isernia and Molise, and the second one Venosa in the province of Potenza in in Basilicata. And then we have two other regions that we want to study to understand better the evolution of the let's say indigenous uh, landscape. For the second area is the Tapino Valley, where we are still uh, doing some research. And the fourth area is the area dominated by the also really big hill fort of um, Casalini Sotana, a place where we can see the, um, let's say, the relations of two different uh, people, the Daunians and the Samnites, which were also expanding farther to the to the south when the Romans were doing the same from from the Rome to the south. Well. Um, the Samnites were a um, successful non-urban society, so that why is so interesting for us, so because we wanted to understand how they managed to face the, the expanding Roman Empire. Rome is, of course, like uh, one of the most paradigmatic uh, urban societies in the Mediterranean, so we, we need to understand why the Samnite society, coming from the mountains, organized uh, let's say in in the small nucleus, uh, were able to counter the expansionists of the Roman Empire and also to uh, expand themselves more into the south. Uh, Pompeii, uh, for instance, was conquered by the Samnite world, and all the Daunian and Lucanian tribes from uh, North Puglia were also uh, well, let's say not conquered, but where they were invaded by the expansion of the of the Samnites at that, at that moment. So. Um, we don't have urban uh, settlements, we don't have cities, but we have to look for other elements to understand this society. So we have in one hand the hill forts that were studied some decades ago by Stefan Oakley, and we also have this really big um, uh, religious uh, sanctuaries that, uh, well, I think there's a consensus in understanding uh, that those uh, well, big sanctuaries with temple theaters were used to uh, well, they were used as uh, meeting places for the Samnite tribes, especially in moments of uh, conflict, organized uh, armies, and so on. So this is uh, one of the better examples. This is the well, let's say sanctuary of Pietra Abundante, where we see the different uh, temple areas and really big theater that follows the Hellenistic examples that appears also as well in Pompeii, and that was built about around 200 years before the first. Um, stone theater was built in Rome so that uh, to highlight the importance of those meeting places in the in the Samnite landscape well uh, we have or we can count with other examples other approaches to the Samnite landscapes uh, the first is the Biferno Valley uh, project carried out by Barker in the in the 80s 
uh, the Sangro Valley projects, this more recent one also, uh, carried out by some colleagues like uh, Bisham, uh, I think Rob Bicher is also involved in that. Uh, this too, so this is uh, the cover of the book published by Graham Barker, and this is well, one example of uh, one publication of the Sangro Valley project uh, towards a phenomenological understanding of the Samnite Hill Force, so they represent two different theoretical approaches. So this is interested in the long-term evolution of the landscape already from prehistoric times to late Roman, uh, to, la to late antiquity. And this one is more focused, at least this paper published by Bebisham is interested in understanding how those uh, big hill forts uh, had an impact in the understanding of the Samnite themselves in the context of the, well, uh, Iron Age uh, welfare in this area. And then we have two other projects, the Sacred Rural Landscapes, carried out by um, Tessestek and Jeremia Pelchrom from Leiden University and the Dutch Institute in Rome, that are trying to understand the, the importance of the rural sanctuaries in the creation of these uh, uh, well, non-urban societies. We have an example of all the area studies around one of these uh, temples, the Temple of uh, San Giovanni in Gallo in the province of uh, Campobasso. So they're trying to understand the, the settlement pattern organized around those uh, rural sanctuaries. And well, once this project was finished, we started a new one called, called uh, Landscape of Early Roman Colonization. So uh, trying to study so those uh, two colonies, but also the, let's say, the indigenous area. So trying to see what happened in between so those uh, areas with the big sanctuary, let's say, the Papino River, which is that uh, white line over there. This is our, our base in Yeltsin. Well, uh, thanks to this uh, project, we have a very detailed information about what happens in the sample area. So here we have the colony of Isernia, here in the center, just, just in the corner, the Roman colony and the well, modern city of, of Isernia. We have all this area covered. We understand very well the settle settlement dynamics, but there are very large areas uh, where we don't have uh, any kind of data and there are specifically those areas high in the mountains like in the Matese, in the upper area of the Volturno River, this is already the Mainarde, the natural uh, border with the Abruzzo region and we don't know what's going on over there because it's a very difficult area to access so we have very partial information, we know that uh, something happening, hill forts, uh, archaic settlements and so on but we don't have resources to enter those areas, so to carry out the traditional survey that we are uh, applying in, in other areas. So we have, thanks to the Ministerio del Ambiente, we have a uh, LiDAR data for, for this uh, zone of Molise. So we, here we see the, so our data sets, the data we, we bought to the, to the minister, and this is the actual, the recent uh, coverage. So we see that it's uh, mostly uh, covering the areas of the three main valleys, so the Trino, Biferno, and Balfortore, because this uh, LIDAR data was produced in order to manage hydrogeological risk. So the higher part of the Volturno Valley with a big outcrop, so it's not, let's say, affected by landslide, as it can happen in the agricultural valleys. So we have to, well, let's say, also consider uh, how useful this information is to our approach to the Samnite hill forts and, and landscapes. Well, um, as I said, the upper part of the Volturno uh, river is not, let's say, is covered, so this is that part. This is the Volturno river going to the, the, uh, the Tyrrhenian Sea, and just here is the area of the colony of Isenia, which is not covered by, by ladder, LIDAR, which is also a problem when you want to um, let's say, um, plan extensive survey using remote sensing. The areas that are not covered are always a, a gap in your understanding of the, of the landscape. So we are trying to also understand this part, south of Isernia. We can cover part of the Matese Mountains and the upper part of the Volturno, Volturno River with some quite in, important cases as the San Paolo, which are, we are going to see uh, soon. Okay. Well, uh, we want to use LIDAR, but combined with other methodological approaches. I already mentioned a survey, so, but uh, we are also using other uh, products like the historical photography, uh, mostly from the um, uh, English and American flights in the 
during the Second World War, we will see it in detail in a moment, and from the 50, 54. We need to adapt also our survey methodology to mountainous areas. So we, in that case, we are working with a points, uh, something that we call point samples. So that consists in a grid, let's say a theoretical grid, imposed all over our mountains. And then we go to the, uh, to the corners of the grid and then we clean the leaves, the organic material, and we expose the soil. And in that soil is where we found our pottery. So it's, um, I, I, I don't have the specific picture of the results, but I can, I can already say that it has been very successful to understand better areas with, uh, say, zero visibility. So, and of course, this is a, an a example of the area we are working in, so forested. So we'll see in the next slide that the forest is uh, gaining territory. And then we can already I mean, perceive some, uh, some elements that we have to uh, study further. Okay, this is one example of the use of a historical flight. So there were flights, especially that one from the RAF, from the English um, uh, well, uh, bombing airplanes that bombed Isernia in the 43. So we have pictures from before the bombardment because they were targeting uh, the German army, which was in that spot. So because Isernia is also a key place to cross the Apenninic mountains from the Adriatic part to the Tyrrhenic part. We have also pictures during the actual movement. So let's say here you see the bombs exploding in this junction in Isernia. Uh, well, uh, and, and after evaluating the, the damage of this uh, bombing in, in this area. So thanks to those pictures and to the new images from the minister, we can track the evolution of the, of the landscape, right? Okay, so we of course are using LIDAR also. So this is one, also one interesting study case. Ilo Monaco, uh, south of Isernia, in the, in the foothills of the Matese mountain. So it's one side over around 100, uh, sorry, uh, 1100 uh, meters above the sea level. So that we is almost disappearing. So thanks to the LIDAR, we can try, we can, we are reconstructing more or less the tumbles, the possible walls, uh, fencing, and so on. And of course, we are also carrying out um, a field survey. Those are examples of very worn uh, black gloss pottery that our colleague uh, Marlene Termier, also from Leiden University, is studying also to try and trying to track uh, origins, uh, uh, network contacts according to the well, production centers of those black gloss, mostly uh, studying the, the fabrics very much in detail. We have other elements that can also explain a little bit uh, about the network, the contacts of these uh, places, apparently isolated in the mountains, but this is a corner of our Olympus mill, so producing, I mean, let's say, volcanic stone that possibly I mean, was part of a trade, uh, the relations of the sites in the longer area, because we see we are just at the other side of the Apenninic mountains, and the other, si the other side we have the Vesuvius, and towards Rome we also have the Colli Albani, and so on. So. Well, that already informs us about the network, the contacts of this uh, particular case. Yeah, so, so this is another case, uh, Castel Riporso, Longano, also not far away from that place. This is the, how the place looked like in the, in the aerial photography. So with the LiDAR, we are kind of uh, understanding a little bit better. So the, well, the, the place, so we don't, we don't have uh, some walls, this polygonal walls, so typical from the some night hill forts. We see the modern terracing, some areas where that are being, well, um, let's say archaic necropolis has been found in those areas. And with this information, we can also plan our survey. So, and then plotting all the, let's say, pottery, <coughs> pottery categories uh, cartographically, so using also the, the, the LIDAR. So we are here, we are using LIDAR to understand the landscape the creation of the landscape to plan our uh, survey and also to to present the results cartographically so combining with the multi multivariate statistics and this is one of the most important uh, study cases this is montagna di gildone really large uh, hill fort near uh, campo basso the uh, current capital of, of molise we have this uh, sketch made produced by uh, well published by stefan oakley so here we see the uh, well, interpretation of the polygonal wall, so in just in a restricted part of the hill fort. But thanks to the, well, to the LiDAR, we will see that we can change this interpretation. So we can, uh, let's say, refresh 
or update this information. Here we are also using other kind of um, uh, methodologies. Uh, in more agricultural areas, we are using um, electroresistivity. We can see I mean, a lot of elements, so let's say Hellenistic villages, prehistoric sites, all disposal around the mountains, and also uh, surveying very intensively all, all this area with this method of point sample, because the moment we were working in that area, that uh, field was not used for agricultural purposes. It was overground completely. Well, uh, using LiDAR, but not only, so we were able to recognize or to offer an update of the of the walling of the wall system of a uh, sorry Montaña de Gildone. So we see that there is not only that small area, so published by Stefan Oakley, but we can consider the entire thing as a wall. We are also indeed surveying parts parts of this uh, wall that we can indeed see that the most of the Hellenistic uh, material appears very close to the to the areas that we are interpreting as gates. So here we see one of the main entrances. So also with some, let's say, stone heaps very massively that we are actually cleaning. So you see here polygonal wall, really big slabs work. So my, my team sitting over the wall. And here we have another uh, case in the center of the, in the upper part of the, of the hill. So that already also points to a later occupation of the, of the area. Here we see all the work done last summer. So documentation of all those structures that we we see in the lidar images that we also but that we also need to understand uh, in the field and here of course we have other elements like uh, this medieval post uh, proto mayolica elements that also help us to understand the later evolution of this uh, landscape in the eighth ninth century and of course we are also trying to integrate these maps with the local information about uh, toponyms so we know that. This area where all those pottery appears is called is called Cole Casarino, so from uh, Casa, from hamlets. The other elements over there refer also to uh, Forticella, so a small fort, or areas related to the to cattle husbandry and so on. Well, uh, those are the conclusions. So uh, leader, of course, has been proven useful to characterize large parts of the Samnite territory. But we should not depend on LIDAR completely, because uh, in the, at least in that case, the coverage is not uh, total. So we are trying indeed to avoid the usage of LIDAR as a positivistic tool only to visualize uh, the landscape and to create pretty, pretty maps. And it, of course, is helping us to develop better methodologies to understand the results in the field. So that we are later on doing our campaigns trying to, well, uh, well um, let's say, explore so doing some kind of a, what we call in survey archaeology ground truthing. And well, um, our understanding, an, an understanding of the, well, of the total landscape of different part of the landscape is uh, needed to render the use of LiDAR, LIDAR useful. So, well, thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>